Hello everyone, welcome to the head-to-head -head between the Samsung Galaxy S3 on the left and the iPhone 5 on the right. I know this has been a very anticipated video because these are the top of the line smartphones at the current moment. So, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, this is the iPhone 5. I know you're all kind of familiar with how it works, you know, slide to unlock. It's got the apps on the home screen there, and this is the Samsung. It's got a funky unlock thing, and you can program as many home screens as you want there. Um, but, you know, I only see the need for two, so I only did two. Okay, this review will be out a series of like three or four kind of rounds. Uh, first round is aesthetics, so how they look. As you can see, the iPhone 5 has a aluminium back, I believe, which is a new kind of style to the iPhone, which gives it a nice gritty kind of feel. It does help a lot when you're feeling your hand and it is a lot lighter than the glass. Also, because there's aluminium, when you drop it, I'm presuming that it doesn't crack, hopefully. And it does have a new kind of display. Obviously, it is larger compared to the normal 3.5 inches of the iPhone 3G to iPhone 4S. To be honest, it does really help. Like, that extra row of whatever, the apps or whatever, or for instance, the weather app, that just a little bit more of room on the top just really does help. So, on the bottom here, you all kind of know it's got the volume and then the dock and then the, yeah, it's all kind of standard, you don't really need to know that. Volume rocker there, lock button, silent, whatever, lock button on top. And then here is the Samsung. Obviously, it's a lot bigger than the iPhone, like, the iPhone could nearly fit in the whole entire thing. I don't know if you could see there, but I hope for it. It is a lot bigger. I have used, sorry, I have used both phones for quite a while. To be honest, uh, this, the size of this phone does get annoying. Like it really, it really does because as you can see if I hold it on, I've got big hands, like I can't reach the top. And I know if you guys thinking that now I can maybe just reach the top. I know you guys thinking that now like doesn't matter but it does. Like it's you have to do like you're holding it like this, you have to go up and slide up to reach the top and even then it's it's really wide. But this like Apple have advertised, you know you can reach the top, it's it's easy, it's nice. But it is more personal preference of what you want in your phone to have a bigger screen or a smaller screen or whatever but you know the iPhone does feel a lot nicer I like the metal and the glass that the iPhone produces this it's plastic it feels like plastic it's just it's plastic <sighs> unfortunately but you know that's just how it is it does have two touch sensitive buttons down here on either side of the um, home screen and those also do get annoying because once again it is large and when you go to touch the top you can sometimes hit that and yeah whatever so next performance now I think you all know or well, I know that the benchmarks between these are the iPhone wins. The iPhone wins by quite a reasonable amount. This, I believe, has the A6 processor, and this has a quad core 1.2 gigahertz processor. They both have one gigabyte of RAM, and yeah, that's all you kind of need to know. But into day-to-day kind of usage, they're both they're both quick, like. I'm not going to bag out either one because they're both the quickest phones in the market. So, yeah, but okay. 
I guess we should do some quick browser performance. Here, I'll just take this one away and get whatever is on the internet browser offered because I haven't used it for a while. Alrighty, so start them both on Google. So, okay. You know what? Let's go to CNET. CNET. CNET News. Oops. Sorry, it's kind of hard using the phones like this. CNET. Alright, there we go. So, we're, gonna, we're both going to go on to to come to a sorry okay I'm going to try and do this as fair as possible but we'll see how it goes by the way we're both on ooh I don't know it's kind of fairly even I'd, I'd have to watch that back to make sure which one won but it looked pretty even to me they're both on the same Wi-Fi connection, which is a pretty fast one, as you can see. The iPhone 5 it doesn't doesn't lag. There's no, you know, like those black and white squares. It's good. It's nice. But then again, look at this. Like, look, look at the text difference. You just gotta. You gotta know which one you want, and this one it does lag. It does lag a little bit. Like, of course, it's so smooth. Like, well, like I said, these are the top phones on the market these days. But it does. It does show a bit of lag. But the extra screen real estate, maybe you want that. Like, it's more of a personal preference. Okay, let's try something else. How about we go to YouTube? Actually, um, sorry. Where is it? 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 There it is. Sorry. All right. You have to search for a cap. Once again, same Wi-Fi network. See, just those touch sensitive buttons. Alright, let's see which one. Alright, as you can see, they can you know, just turn that down. One of the advantages to the iPhone that Apple have been stating is that it's got a, like it fills up the screen with the, the new aspect ratio and like, to be honest, it's not that much of a pro, like, look here, just loaded a YouTube video, hopefully you guys can see that, just loaded a YouTube video, this one doesn't even look like it's filling up the screen. That one, once again, it's kind of the same. So, comparing the screens, once, when I've been using these phones, indoors, they're both fine. But as soon as you step outdoors, with this phone, Samsung, the screen, it's really dim. Like, it, it's quite dim. It's hard to see, like, what you're doing. The iPhone's a lot brighter in that respect. So we just go back. Oh, that's a bit of a dirt move. We'll just go back. Alright. So, here they are. <sighs> okay. So we talked about the ergonomics, how they are to hold, how they are to feel. Obviously, this is plastic. And how, you know, the performance wise, they're both quick. Alright, they're both quick, but if I was 
to make a decision which one I've been using. Well, which one I have I been using? I've been using the iPhone. I've been using them both for about the same amount of time. And I've really liked the iPhone and stuck with the iPhone, to be honest. This one does sit in my drawer and I, it doesn't do much. And why will... It's personal preference, but this one... The iPhone just feels more snappy, more responsive. It's just, I think it is the better phone. I don't, like, I'm not biased towards Apple or Android, but I just honestly... I think this is smoother, it is faster, it is just... I don't know. It's personal preference. But, like, these are great phones. Either one you'd be happy to have, like, off, just so happy to have, and it doesn't really matter which one, it's just your, it's just what you want, like, if you want something that's more customizable, like, all these buttons down here, I've customized that to look like the jelly bean look, and Android's just, it's more customizable, iOS, it's, you know, hard to customize, they only just let you, like, put the wallpaper behind the apps, like, there's not as much freedom and capability, but once again, they're great phones, and you should be happy with either. Anyway, that's my small kind of review, and this has my, been my first review, so I'd love it if you guys had any comments or advice to keep me going, because I've got lots more stuff to do. Thank you very much, this has been <laughs> Student Knows Best doing a review and head-to-head -head between the iPhone 5 and Samsung Galaxy S3. Cheers.